Welcome to the Anxiety Coaches Podcast, a relaxing and informative show where we explore anxiety, panic, and PTSD, sharing how you can overcome them for life. Aloha, welcome back to the Anxiety Coaches Podcast. I'm your host and coach, Gina Ryan, and I am so happy to be with you again today as together we can consider the many ways to bring your mind and body back to its natural peace and calm. In today's episode, I'm talking about multitasking and anxiety, and they actually do go together. You may have noticed this in your own life, so let's just jump into it and see what I have been able to unearth about multitasking and anxiety. So what I want to get to is I want to get to taming your senses for more peace and calm, right? We want to be able to let the senses settle in instead of being on high alert, right? So let's see. I want to ask you if you have ever really noticed that when you scroll social media, you might also be listening to a podcast or watching a video. Have you ever done that? Or maybe listening to a podcast, watching a video, and also checking your email. I mean, I caught myself doing this. I caught myself having two audio things. One was video also. It was like a a podcast and a video, a YouTube. And I also had the urge to pick up my phone and look at my email. And I realized (laughs) there is something wrong with this picture. And I was curious as to what was driving that, right? Why would I want to be doing so many things all at once? I was obviously not paying very good attention to any of them. So anyway, perhaps you have found yourself doing other things like eating while watching a video and also checking your email at the same time. It could be um, all kinds of different recipes, but what we come down to is that we are multitasking. And I wanted to see if multitasking was any good or if it was harmful to those who are maybe proning towards anxiety. So We all do this and we can look at this as multitasking and we probably all do it. But what we are doing is stimulating multi-sensory channels simultaneously. We are getting all of our sensory channels stimulated all at the same time. And I just want to say that the verdict is in that we do not accomplish more by multitasking. So the more we stimulate our senses, the more we seem to want to stimulate them. Have you ever noticed that? Like it's not enough. You get kind of used to a certain level of multitasking and then you feel like you have to add something more. I think that is us trying to stimulate another sensory channel. So it can actually seem like the multitasking wants more multitasking. And the issue with stimulating multi-senses is that we gradually crave this type of stimulation over time. We crave it and then we want more of it. What does this sound like? This sounds like dopamine. Some of the feelings without this multi-stimulation of the senses are boredom, tiredness, or even anxiety. Yes, it begins to look and feel like an addiction. And when we are without the multi-stimulation, we can get anxious. So we kind of set ourselves up for this. It's like getting into an addiction where when you let go of it, you have to deal with all the repercussions of being without your drug or your substance or your multi-stimulation. And right now, I want to focus on you for a moment and our sponsor, Calm, and ask you, how are you feeling? How are things going? If your answer is anything less than amazing, I want to give you some ideas. Our partners at Calm have the tools you need to feel 
your best. We're partnering with Calm, the number one mental wellness app, to give you the tools that improve the way you feel. Reduce stress and anxiety through guided meditations, improve focus with curated music tracks, and rest and recharge with Calm's imaginative sleep stories for both children and adults. This is a way to be focused in one place at one time. And obviously we don't spend our whole day there, but taking a calm break can be just the thing you need. If you go to calm.com slash ACP, you'll get a special offer of 40% off a calm premium subscription and new content is added every week. Calm is ready to help you stress less, sleep more, and live a happier, healthier life. I know personally that the Calm app can give you a place to go to when you feel like you want to go on your phone and start scrolling. I know that just stopping at your Calm app and diving deep right there will bring you so much more peace and calm. For listeners of the show, Calm is offering an exclusive offer of 40% off a Calm premium subscription at calm.com slash ACP. Go to calm, C-A-L-M dot com slash ACP for 40% off unlimited access to Calm's entire library. Go to C-A-L-M dot com slash A-C-P. That's com dot com slash A-C-P. So there was a study from uh, Stanford. I will put a link to the research study they did. I'll put that in the show notes. There is so much out there about multitasking and everything I read was how it can make us feel uneasy and stressed like task switching overstimulates your brain and stresses it. And chronic stress leads to low-grade anxiety. Research shows that multitasking is associated with higher levels of depression and anxiety among social media users. Anxiety quickly makes you feel out of balance. And how do we feel when we feel out of balance? We are actually signaling to our mind and body that there is something wrong. And when we think that there's something wrong, our amygdala is on guard. I want you to know if you're multitasking, it can affect your mental health. Experts advise engaging in what is called deep work, focusing on one task at a time and eliminating all other distractions. Now, this could be something that you might work on, finding one task that you are going to do with deep work and eliminate the background distractions or things you actually, they're not even distractions, they're things you want to bring in, right? So see if you can focus on one thing, pick something to work on like that. Maybe it is when you do your email, let's say you just close everything else off and you don't have a podcast playing in the background and you don't have a video playing in the corner of the screen and you can actually just focus on the task at hand, each email as you're going through it. Just give one place that you can try this out for yourself. A study conducted at Stanford University shows how multitasking adds stress to our daily lives and negatively affects our mood, motivation, and productivity. They said people who are regularly bombarded with several streams of electronic information do not pay attention control their memory, or switch from one job to another as well as those who prefer to complete one task at a time, a group of Stanford researchers has found. So I think we want to pay attention. Of course, no pun intended there. We really have to 
let go of these small things in the background of our life that is adding stress to us that we don't even know about. This is why when people say, oh my gosh, I had a panic attack. It came out of the blue. No, it didn't come out of the blue. What happened is that we have been loading ourselves with stress often from places that we did not even know were adding. And it could be as simple as this multitasking or this multi-sensory stimulation. A major downside of multitasking is that feeling of anxiety, which plagues people who consistently divide their attention. This study conducted by researchers at the University of California in Irvine shows that the symptoms of interrupted work range from psychological to physical. They performed a test which measured the heart rates of employees with and without access to office email. Those who could access their emails remained wired up. They exhibited higher heart rates than those who didn't have access. On the other hand, the second group was observed to perform their jobs relatively stress-free. Now, who would have thought that just knowing that we had emails waiting in an inbox that we could access was stressful for our mind and body? I think we need to pay attention again, attention to these small things that maybe aren't so small. Another piece that came up that I thought was interesting was that devoting your attention to too many tasks at once. If you do that, you will never have working memory left to come up with ideas and concepts that are truly creative. So yes, you'll get your assignments done in an average rate, but greatness will be beyond your reach. When we are anxious, and we just talked about that, our bodies start accessing more of the primitive brain structures that are designed to keep us safe and from danger. That would be our amygdala or our lizard brain. When that happens, we stop accessing the other areas like the frontal lobe that have adapted for critical thinking and creativity. This is really vast. And this is just what we know. I'm sure there is more. We want to be able to be creative. We want to be at ease and stress-free. And so it sounds like the way that the world is right now, with so much available to us, so much coming into us, our senses from all directions, that we have to be the ones to decide what we let in, what we don't, when we do and when we don't. There might be a time where you want to have all kinds of things. You're scrolling and doing email and doing something else. That might be fine. You just don't want a full, steady diet of those kinds of behaviors. You don't want that to be your entire eight-hour workday where you are just multitasking, having your senses totally overloaded, and teaching your body that you want more of that, right? Because then when you subtract it and it's not there, you get those symptoms that we talked about in the beginning of the show, the symptoms of boredom and tiredness or anxiety. So you're going to be causing yourself anxiety, be doing it, and then you're causing yourself anxiety when you let go of it. It's just like other drugs. They are, they cause you to be anxious. And then when you come off of them and you eliminate them from your system, it causes you a lot of anxiety. So you're stuck. You just got to go through it. You got to get through the withdrawal of these kinds of behaviors and you can do it and you don't have to do this right all at once, but let's come up with some ideas that might be places you could try to enhance your life, and be more focused. You could practice putting your attention on one sense or activity at a time. So just using your eyes, let's say, or just opening email and responding to email. I keep coming back to that. Obviously, it's a big thing in my life. The email, the inbox, oh my goodness. 
but practice putting your attention on one activity or one sense at a time. A beautiful way to become in tune with your senses and not overstimulate them is to eat one meal a week in silence. Even if you're with other people, I used to take an art therapy course at Stella Maris in Skinny Atlas, New York, and I took it for, I don't know, it was eight weeks or whatever, and we worked in the morning on artwork, and then in the afternoon we would process our artwork. But in the morning, we were all together, we're working on our artwork, and then we went to lunch for an hour and a half, and we ate in silence. We were together with other people and we ate our lunch in silence. It was all part of the work. And for you, so even if you are eating with maybe your workmates, you could just explain to them you're eating in silence. If it's with a family, you might want to make it a family affair where everybody ate for maybe 10 minutes in silence. Obviously, you have to temper it for the people involved, but try it, eating one meal a week in silence, just not having conversation, not having screens, audios, etc., even a book. Just eat. Let your senses dive deep. Let your senses do some deep work into this meal. It actually makes things look very different. Another thing you could do is while reading, you could eliminate the use of audios, phone checking, eating snacks, etc. Just read. See if you can do that. Do some a deep dive into what you are reading. Another idea is if you notice that outside stimulation enters, let it be there as background noise, not something to process. This is an excellent activity, an exercise for you to be able to do if you are anxious, to be able to learn to let outside stimulation come and let it be there as background noise. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to figure it out. You don't have to do anything with it. It's not something that needs to be processed. It's just there in the background. And that can be very helpful for people who have intrusive thoughts come up. We can learn to let those be background noise or static. They don't have to be processed either. So start small. Give yourself a time limit to be in sensory minimalism, to get a feel for it. See what it is that you can do or what you feel different after trying. And give yourself some time with it. You know, like if you do one meal a week, give yourself a month or two before you check in and see how different it feels. It's a great practice for actually doing it your lunchtime at work. Many people go off on their own anyway at lunchtime. So maybe you could try it then. And again, start small and give yourself a chance to get a feel for it because it's going to feel different. It might even feel a little weird, but it's okay. That means you're noticing something that you haven't seen before. I hope this show has been helpful for you. And I would love to hear from you if you have noticed any changes, if you give yourself a chance to stop multitasking in a certain area of your life. I would love to hear from you. Anxiety Coaches Podcast at gmail.com. That's it for today's episode. And before I read today's quote, I want to remind you that if you want more than what's offered here and more personal guidance, you might be ready for our group coaching membership program. It's a deeper dive into what you learn here on these episodes. Each month, you'll receive two anxiety clearing skill sheets sent in email. You'll also receive two live group coaching calls, which are recorded in case you can't attend. Those will help guide you through your challenges. And there's also a secret Facebook group for coach and community support every day, all month long. So if you're ready for more, go to anxietycoachespodcast.com slash group 
dash coaching and join today. I'd love to see you in the group. And now for today's quote. What looks like multitasking is really switching back and forth between multiple tasks, which reduces productivity and increases mistakes by up to 50%. And that's from Susan Cain. I'll be back in a few more days with another podcast. Until then, be well and aloha. Thanks so much for joining us for today's episode of the Anxiety Coaches Podcast. Find more information at the anxietycoachespodcast.com.